Hey Monaz, Pastor Daniel here. I'm super excited to be able to journey with you in this Lenten season as we go through <clears throat> this little book together, Abide With Us. It's a wonderful little text as it helps us journey into the season of Lent together. Now I get week five, and in week five we encounter something kind of interesting. We get to see what the Word of God is all about. Let me get my coffee going here. This is a little bit loud, so we'll just take a second. You know, it wouldn't be a Pastor Daniel video if there wasn't coffee involved, right? So we'll get this French press rolling. I didn't know it'd be this loud when I poured all this coffee here, but it's gonna be worth it, I promise you. Absolutely gonna be worth it. <clears throat> so during this this chapter, this uh, week five, we see the idea of the Word of God. Now, you know, as a kid, I encountered this meaning the Bible, right? Really meaning this book right here, people always called it the Word of God. And sometimes I would hear people talk about it as if the, the physical book itself or the words inside of it had some kind of special authority, right? There were times where we had to be careful how we treated such a little book. I can even recall being a kid and getting like my first leather bound Bible and I got a highlighter out and I would highlight stuff and some people felt uncomfortable. Like, oh, you can't draw on the Word of God. My Bibles are really marked up these days. So that's a, that's a good thing to do. If you've got your highlighters and your pens out, I say go for it. Mark those up. Because the thing is that the Word of God isn't just these penned words, right? Written on the page. There's something more that's happening in the text. Now, John does a great job with this. He helps us in the very first part of John chapter 1, verse 1. Now, he throws a little bit of homage back to Genesis. And he starts the words, in the beginning. Just like Genesis 1, 1 began with the words, in the beginning. Then God says, uh, right there in John chapter 1, he writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, if you get a commentary out and you read over John chapter 1, 1, it's pages and pages about what John is trying to say with this little word. It's pretty intense. But in short, what John is saying is the Word, that which existed in the beginning with God, that which started with God, and that what really is God, right? is Jesus. The word is the expression of Jesus. It's kind of the embodiment of who God is, the truth, so to speak, of what God is and what God is about. Now, John's a pretty smart guy, and so at the time of writing, when he penned the words, he, he dipped into philosophy a little bit. I'm going to spare us a little bit of that because I don't want to make a whole video on philosophy. But at that point in time, John was working with the notion that those who read his book would have really understood what this idea of the word or the Greek word logos meant. Had a long, weighted, weighted meaning in culture, society, education, and philosophy. John used it as a way to bridge the gap between Hebrew theology and the notion of Jesus being in fact God, making him the Messiah, and connecting it over to kind of the educated culture of the day and helping to understand how we saw who Jesus was and how Jesus was in fact God. Again, like we said, a way to kind of summarize that might be that the Word of God is the truth of who God is, the embodiment of who God is. In the incarnation, Jesus helps us see God in a touchable way, in a human way, right? God became something that God made in the incarnation. And the way we talk about that, the way the scriptures help us see it, is that we say that it's the word of God, a presentation of who God is. Now, if you were to journey through our book today, you see some of Martin Luther's words in week, week five. He talks about the need to proclaim the word of God, the need to preach, to embody, to live into the word of God. To see what Jesus means in our life, how Jesus might save us specifically, how the word of God comes in and removes our sin and restores us, makes us human to the fullest extent that God designed us to be. That then we're able to participate in salvation, be part of the church and live a robust Christian life. There's a lot of ways we do that, right? One of the ways is during this Lenten season, as we spend time together at church, as we journey through a text just like this one together. We spend some time in prayer and reflection. We kind of align our life with the Word of God, with Jesus, to see how might those become closer 
together. How we might be able to live more faithfully as a Christian people. Sometimes it means we're fairly vulnerable as we reflect, we read, and we pray, and we see exactly what God might be asking of us. On one hand, in Lent, it sometimes is a sense of confession. Places where maybe there's sin in our lives or things where we're living in not the most faithful way that God's calling us to something deeper, something better. And we have to kind of walk the line of the uncomfortable expression of confession, right? Where we confess our sins and God restores us. And maybe there's a sense in which also that God's opening our eyes to new things, new ideas about God that are transforming the way we think, the way we believe, the way we act, the way we live. And maybe it's just moving us into more faithful action as Christian people. Maybe it's something that invites us out in a way that we live differently in the workplace. Maybe it's something we do differently with our families. I mean, maybe even there's a sense in which you could reach into like our mental health lives. Maybe it means the way that we reach into our physical lives as well. Picking up some more exercise, better eating habits, things like that. The work of salvation and the work of the word of God of Jesus in our world is really a holistic image of how God is healing us and restoring us and redeeming us. All those things play together. So I really hope as we're digging in this week, as you're taking some time to read through these pages and think through what the word of God is, maybe you do think back and encounter a kind of that idea like I did growing up, where we saw the notion that it was just a Bible, it was a physical book, something that we held and we hung on to. Maybe we open our eyes a little bit, or maybe our imagination starts to run a little bit wild as we see something a little bit deeper, something a little bit more robust. That's not just the book, the words on the page, but it's something that comes alive, right? Something that we encounter, something that impacts our lives. You know, along the way, when we talk about the word of God and that it being the truth of God, one of the things we have to do as Christians is we have to embody truth. You know, as as we are spending time thinking about that the word of God is something more than a book, that it's God, Christ's presence among us, it's not something we can just believe, right? It's not something that we can just acknowledge or confess, maybe even preach, right? Teach in our classes. It's something we must live out. Something that must actualize itself in our lives. Something that we must actually do, right? Sometimes that's where things get kind of complicated. When we have to take what we think, what we believe, and we've got to do it. That's the hard part about Christian life. But that's why we do this together. That's why we journey together in faith communities. That we can gather around each other. We can support each other. We can encourage each other. We can cast vision together. We can come along together, pick each other up when we're weak, support our wins together. It's a wonderful way that we can be in the church. You know, another way maybe we embody the word of God, the way that we live into God's calling in our lives, maybe that means we get involved a little bit in church. Maybe that means we help teach a class. Maybe we go downstairs, we volunteer in the kids department, right? Every church needs wonderful volunteers. Go down and help in the teen department. That's kind of scary stuff, but it can be fun. I promise you. So maybe that's something you think about this Lenten season. Maybe process a little bit about where God might be calling you. Maybe where God's inviting you to give more of yourself, your time, your energy, even your resources back to the church. Be invested. Be involved with those around you. Maybe that's a way that you could sacrifice, lean into and embody the Lenten season. Embody the notion of the word of God, Christ coming to earth, becoming flesh, becoming a human, sacrificing himself for us offering us salvation and inviting us to do the same, to offer ourselves back to God, to offer ourselves to what God is inviting us to do, the mission of God in the world. I really hope that you can lean into that. I hope that this week as you watch this video, as you read this book together and you reflect, that God stirs something in you. God invites you into something wonderful. Maybe it's a little bit uncomfortable, but that's okay. I really am excited about what God's doing in your community, in your faith community. So I'll be praying for you guys, and I hope you have an excellent, uncomfortable, and faithful Lenten season. Amen.